All right. So, hey, Lamore, tell us a little bit about Adafruit first off. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Lamore Freed, and I'm the founder and lead engineer of Adafruit Industries. We're an open source hardware company here in Manhattan. We're actually in the factory right now, and this is my desk. This is where I do all the CAD design of an oscilloscope and a computer and, and you know, probes and multimeters. And what's really interesting about how Adafruit works is I design electronics here in the factory over there, and then the manufacturing equipment is about 20 feet away. So I'm going to turn around and show you what I actually use to manufacture. This is a surface mount line. It's basically the pick and place line that manufactures everything electronic you have. But usually this is done abroad, usually in Asia or maybe in Mexico. But I've got this right here in my Soho factory. And it's a doorbell line with a stenciler and a pick and place and a board loader and oven. And, and yeah, I'm able to design and manufacture uh, five seconds apart. That's awesome. So um, this is pretty counterintuitive. And it, it is pretty amazing. You go in there and you go, oh my gosh, this is the whole, the whole deal. You're actually uh, one of the last, I, I believe you're actually the last cell phone manufacturer in America, among other things. That's right. We uh, do have an open source hardware cell phone, uh, the Arduino phone that we sell and, and manufacture here in, a, um, in Manhattan. Yeah. And it's kind of fun. It's like you can build your own phone. You don't have to worry about anybody listening in. Yeah, is there any chance we can kind of look inside uh, one of these machines, or are they, are they running right now? Um, this is a stencil printer, but I can show you the pick and place, which is the most interesting machine. Yeah. Yeah. This is the machine that actually does the pick and placing of components. Components come on reels, that, you know, they come on um, spools, and the reels are loaded into the machine here. And then this is the gantry. For safety, it's off. Uh, because if you stick your hand in while it's running, you could take your hand off. But this picks up 12 components all at once and pushes them down to the circuit board at very high speed. Uh, it's much more precise and faster than a human could ever be. And this is basically what allows us to have miniaturized electronics like cell phones, tablets, laptops, all that good stuff. So uh, you're a small business, but not that small. Uh, you know, so can you tell us, sort of, are you willing to share anything about company financials? Sure. Uh, so we're here in this 50,000 square foot manufacturing facility. We have a couple floors here in Soho. We have about 100 people, both on hand here doing manufacturing, fulfillment, shipping, office, human resources, as well as engineering. Uh, and then uh, last year, 2004, we grossed uh, 33 million uh, in revenue. And this year, we're probably going to do about 40 million. And, and this took a lot of venture capital, right? Absolutely not. One of the cool things about Adafruit is it's completely self-funded. I'm the 100% owner of the company. We haven't taken any VC, no loans, no funding. We're not against it. For some companies, it makes sense. But we've been able to bootstrap and all this equipment and stuff is all ours. That's kind of awesome. Uh, I, I've watched you do it. Originally, it was with some credit cards, a lot of uh, elbow grease. But you've also, I have to say, you're a master of social media and your values of sharing are part of what has propelled your business. Can you kind of talk a little bit about how you market your products? Yeah. So I grew up in a culture that really was uh, worshipped open source and thought that this was the way to have a community of engineers and designers and now makers and hackers and, and students share information and learn from each other. And so I've kind of taken that philosophy and I brought it over to the internet space that we're in. So for example, every single week we have a weekly show and tell. It's a hangout where kids and makers, hackers all over the world show up and show off their projects. You know, what are they making? What costumes do they build for Halloween? And then we also have every single week at 8 p.m. Um, uh, Ask an Engineer, which is our broadcast show we've been doing it for six years. Where we answer engineering questions live on the internet. We're also like on Twitch and Ustream and YouTube, Periscope, everything. That's right. If I recall, when we did our first rehearsal for this, you put on Periscope. We're Periscoping right now. Oh, OK. <laughs> and and uh, uh, the other thing that I, I, I love, uh, you've got to tell this story about uh, women in engineering that yeah, came so, from one of your, your listeners. Yeah, we've, so the show we've been doing, um, this uh, show and tell and ask engineer, we've been doing it for four or five years, which you know, for you and me, that's not that long. That's like a drop in the bucket. But for a lot of these kids, like, that's a huge amount of time. And you know, we've met students who, you know, they're like, oh, I, I saw your show as a kid, and now I'm like in high school or college studying engineering. And I'm like, wow, that's awesome that you know, we've inspired you. And we had uh, one parent who emailed us uh, a few years back 
And he said, you know, I've been watching, I'm an engineer and I'm, I'm teaching my daughter about engineering and she's like six or seven. And we've been watching your show and, and she's so inspired by the guests that you have. I always have female engineers on the show to show off their projects that the girl actually asked him, daddy, are there guy engineers too? Are there boy engineers or are there only women? And I thought that was so cool. Because <laughs> so that change what people see engineering is. It's, it's not just, you know, this mythical white lab coat. It's making with your hands, it's being creative. It's, it's costuming, it's wearables. It's, it's hacking your teddy bear. So it, you know, tells you when somebody's entered your room. All these projects that Arduino and Raspberry Pi and open source and open source hardware has enabled the community to do is astonishing. And I'm like so excited every week to see what people are doing. So uh, open source hardware is a big part of what you do. Uh, all of your designs are given away for free. Uh, how's that work working for you? How's it working? Well, it's working really, really well because you know we're doubling and tripling the company. I have like 500 or 600 GitHub repos because we have one for every single project. The hardware, the schematics, the CAD layout, the firmware, the software. Um, we even have uh, injection molded parts that we've put up our CAD files on, on GitHub or you know, wherever we want to share our files on Thingiverse is where we share some 3D printed files. And I think we release like two or three projects a week now and it's working out really great. We have a community that remixes what we're doing, that's creative, that shares and collaborates. And for us, it's about you know, shipping really fast, really good customer support, really good quality, the manufacturing that we're able to do here you know, we're not going to just do patents for the sake of having patents. 17 years, it doesn't matter. In six months, somebody's come out with something better already. So instead of spending all of our time on lawyers, we spend our time on innovating and providing a great experience for the customer. But you also spend a lot of time on education. I remember when you first got, I don't know if it was that pick or place machine or an earlier one. It was a smaller, it was a little pick and place mini yeah, one. I, I remember you, you saying, you know, the first thing that you did uh, you know, you got it and you said, you know, you imported it directly from Japan, if I recall. Yeah. And uh, you said the documentation was terrible. And so the first thing you did was to create video tutorials so for other people on how to use the machine, how to set it up. And you kind of put that out on the Internet. So there's sort of a way that, you know, educating your competitors and growing the market has been in your DNA from the beginning. And in fact, you know, that's turned out to be a pretty successful strategy for you. Yeah, last year we launched our learning site, which is, which is a custom site basically designed for me to be able to publish tutorials. We have about 900 tutorials that we've published over the last 10 years, covering everything from how to strip wires to how to make your very own cell phone to you know, making a laptop out of a Raspberry Pi. And you know, it, it's, again, it's all free, it's all available. You don't have to sign up, there's no like, courses or you know like you have to purchase anything it's all there you don't even have to use adafruit stuff you don't want you can build it with anything you can find around the house and our philosophy is um good information is advertising so instead of paying for ads we put up these awesome projects and awesome tutorials and they get picked up I and mean, i think you've blogged a couple of them and mm -hmm. they've been definitely posted around and passed around the internet um, and, and that's kind of what makes adafruit awesome it's it's a place you can go and you can get inspired and you can be creative and even though we have all this equipment, we're really just a tutorial company. We're an education company with a gift shop at the end. So if you are inspired and you want to learn about electronics, you want to pick up an Arduino and Raspberry Pi, grab something from Adafruit and get going. That's a super important lesson, I think, for this next economy, that there are multiple ways to monetize. You know? And if you spread your knowledge, if you spread you know, entertainment, you often actually find different ways to come to that. But I want to uh, bring up something else. Uh, your husband, uh, Phil, uh, who uh, you know, works with you on the media side of the business, once described you to me as an engineer with attitude. And uh, I remember reading a post that you wrote about why you liked a particular brand of resistor that you had kind of gone over to China to source. And I just want to kind of talk about the aesthetic side. You know, a lot of people kind of put sort of the arts over here and engineering over here as though they're different. And you kind of represent kind of this, uh, you know, combination of an artistic sensibility, which even down to the level of, you know, this little tiny component that nobody, you know, most people kind of just look at if they happen to take a device apart, 
you know, they wouldn't even, you know, know what it was. And you're kind of like, no, I want this particular kind, you know, and those aesthetic decisions, but also at, you know, the kinds of products. I remember when you found those uh, vacuum tubes in Russia somewhere and you went, oh, I can make a cool clock out of these. And that became a product till they were gone because there were only, you know, a few thousand of them left, whatever. You, talk about the aesthetics of what you do. Absolutely. I mean, I think that electronics is a form of art. It's a form of design. It's, it's the art form that I've picked to express myself. And what I think is really interesting about this, I want to tie back to a previous um, conversation that we had, is there's a lot of people out there who are artists, who are engineers or designers, who are fashion, interested in fashion or makeup or jewelry. And I feel like historically the electronics community has sort of pushed those people aside and said, well, you know, you're into fashion, well, we're into ham radio, and then those things don't combine. But I think that, especially now with the maker movement, this is an excellent time to expand who can become an engineer. Say, if you're a fashion designer, and you know, we went to a Zach Posen show a few months ago here at Fashion Week, and Zach Posen had LEDs and microcontrollers in a dress that was like lighting up, and these, this group of um, girls from the Bronx were designing code for it, uh, for the Girls Who Code uh, Consortium. And I think that's so cool because we're showing people that electronics isn't just sitting at a desk. It's being creative. It's doing something with your hands. It's what you are already interested in. You like to skateboard? Add electronics to your skateboard. You like to make dresses? Add LEDs to your dresses. You know, you, you like dancing? Make light up dance costumes. This is what engineering is. It, it's not just in a book. It's not just in the lab. It's at home. It's what you love to do, and like I want to see more engineers. Does anyone in the audience have any questions for Lamore? If so, uh, uh, come to the mics, or if we have any from Twitter, we can put them up on the screen here. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm, I'm just going to kind of uh, ask you uh, a, another question uh, sort of okay. related to that. Uh, you know, this joy of making, you know, it really involves uh, choices that we make, you know, sort of like not just to be consumers, but to be creators. Mm -hmm. uh, is th that, that's open to everybody. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, I think everybody is creative. Everyone likes to, to build and make. And I think that, you know, nowadays, like you see like three-year-olds with iPads. Everybody has solid aluminum electronics, you know, but they don't necessarily understand what's in them. And I think people have that curiosity. Yeah, no, what, what is in my cell phone? What is in my GPS? And I think that making kind of lets people, you know, you have your tablet, but maybe you can build your own with a Raspberry Pi and understand more and, and not feel like technology is controlling you, but you have a say in what your technology is and how you use yeah. it. All right, we, can, we just have one question over here and then, then we're gonna have to wrap. Hi there. <laughs> I wanna thank you for being so engaging. I'm really, really liking this part of this conference. Uh, just for what it's worth, not just because she's a woman on stage. Can you get to the question, please? Yeah, of course I can. We're um, running out of time. <laughs> so um, how can people help you? Should they be doing what you're doing separately, or should they be, you know, do you think that this is something that needs aggregation of effort or lots of little efforts like yours? I think that the most powerful thing that you can do as an individual is, you know, you probably have a young person in your life, maybe, maybe a young girl, who is interested in science or engineering or math or technology and doesn't have resources or doesn't, doesn't feel like she can become an engineer. And if you can do a project with her, you know, pick up an Adafruit kit or just check out one of our tutorials, follow along or, or look online. There's so many tutorials on, on the Make blog or other uh, websites and do that project with them and, and inspire them. Like, that's the most you can do. That's more important to help one person than to you know, try to think, okay, I'm gonna do some gigantic project and maybe I'll affect millions of people. Something you do tomorrow is more powerful. Thank you so much, Lamore. Thanks a lot for joining us here today. Thank you.